Good evening and welcome to the Thursday, June 11th, 2015 meeting of the Northampton School Committee. I'm Mayor David Narkowitz and we'll begin the meeting by asking the clerk to call the roll of the school committee. Present. Here. Here. Present. Mr. De Mr. Zuhowski is actually here, but not here. He'll be here shortly. <laughs> okay. okay, so uh, we have a quorum. So um, we're actually going to begin tonight's uh, meeting with a special, um, a special event, and that is a uh, special recognition of our um, retirees. So the Superintendent and I will be moving over to the podium uh, for that part of the uh, part of the meeting. So we'll just take a minute here. <laughs> Good evening, retirees, and welcome. I began planning for this night about four months ago when Laura asked, so what do you want to get for retirees this year? And I immediately thought, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not going to have anything to do with apples. You know, I say that as the proud owner of many school presidents with an apple theme. I actually got the idea for what we were going to present tonight during Northampton High's historic first Arts Night Inn and I stopped in the wood shop and found students making these wonderful pens um, from locally sourced trees. So I thought that it would be very appropriate to send you off with a little piece of Northampton so High. Um, so I will just call you up and we'd be happy to offer you this little token of our appreciation. Carlos Cartagena, a custodian at Jackson Street School, retiring with two years of service. Carol DeMauro, Director of Food Services, retiring with 14 years of service. Yay! Edwin Matuzowicz, custodian at Jackson, retiring with 15 years of service. Kako Rolich, a math teacher at Northampton High School, retiring with 17 years of service. <laughs> Susan Asapowitz, an educational support professional at Bridge Street, retiring with 18 years of service. Cynthia Dermarshkin, Jackson Street School nurse, retiring with 19 years of service. <laughs> Thomas Aiken, a science teacher at JFK Middle School, retiring with 21 years of service. Holly Gazy, fifth grade teacher at Jackson Street School, retiring with 22 years. Of <laughs> Francis Cooper, a fourth grade teacher at Bridge Street School, retiring with 22 years of service. Bonnie Kingsley, an educational support professional at Northampton High School, retiring with 23 years of service. Thank you. 
Susan Lucy, an educational support professional at Ryan Road, retiring with 28 years of service. And Jim Miller, athletic director and science teacher at Northampton High School, retiring with 38 years of service. Is there anyone I may have overlooked? So, <laughs> oh. Mindy. Oh. She can't retire. That's my fault. It's on here. Sorry, no retirement. <laughs> Millie Menez, administrative assistant at Jackson Street School. And I do believe that they call that repression. As I said, you know, I was just getting to know you and now you're retiring. <laughs> After 29 years of service to Jackson Street School. On behalf of the Northampton Public Schools, I'd like to thank you all for your service and wish you the best of luck in retirement. You can stay for the meeting if you'd like. <laughs> Okay, as our uh, retirees leave, we'll move on to the next item in the agenda. Uh, that is the public comment period. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak? Okay, hearing none, are there announcements from school committee members? I have some announcements. Okay, Ms. Duvall. Okay, let me get a little organized here. I have actually quite a few, it's that time of the year. Um, right now, tonight at 7 p.m. at the Northampton High School Auditorium, which is where Mr. Zakowski is, the JFK Chorus is presenting their spring annual concert. And um, anybody who's not here, hopefully they're over there enjoying the concert. Last night at the Academy of Music, um, the JFK's final band concert of the year was held. They played to a packed house and they sounded wonderfully. I also had the honor to hear them perform on May 29th at the annual Big East competition in Westfield. And they were incredible. They placed platinum, which is the top 2% of all the bands. And I really have to give a shout out here to Claire Ann Williams, who has done wonders. These kids have just had two years of band from, from having none till winning a platinum. She is just an incredible, incredible music teacher and we are really blessed to have her. Um, on June 22nd, Jackson Street School will be hosting a ribbon cutting to mark the beginning of the new Gwen Agna Playground, so the construction of that. Um, let's see what else we have here. On Wednesday, June 17th, the JFK Community Mural will be unveiled at 5 p.m. at the JFK Bus Circle. The rain date will be Thursday. Students and artists have worked together to create the mural at JFK, and it's not quite done, so um, hopefully people will come to see that. Um, next Wednesday at 5, there will be student speakers who will discuss the mural process, and it's a great chance to also meet the artists. Um, uh, radio personality Bill Newman has come over, and he's seen the mural, and he invited the art teacher, Heather Berlin, and two high school students, Isabella Gebhardt and Eileen Wang, as well as two JFK students, Isabella Manka and Jet Duval, to be on the radio next Tuesday morning um, on his show to discuss the mural. Uh, this Friday, June 12th, the Mayor's youth, Co youth Commission, which is made up of high school students, will unveil their benches in front of City Hall at 5 o'clock. Everyone is welcome to come down and celebrate. Let me see what else we have. On Wednesday, May 10th, no, yes, June 10th, the Northampton Prevention Coalition held a gallery opening focusing on the homeless in Northampton. It was a very nice display. It was a nice opportunity for the high school um, tag students to talk to the public and show what it is that they were doing. Also, they, on Friday, June 25th and June 26th, there will be a parent-teacher session on anxiety in students. We'll have Lynn Lyons as the presenter. This is from elementary to high school age students. And the goal of this workshop is to give us some pragmatic strategies to support these students and at times their families 
so that they can stay in school and be productive. So hopefully if you have any issues with anxiety in your students from elementary to high school, please join us then. Almost done. JFK celebrated another successful um, year of finishing the MCAS and also just a successful year. They celebrated with an ice cream social. There we go. Last Friday, June 5th, the PTO and Heralds provided the ice cream. And this was a very interesting time for me. I helped out there, and we had no toppings. And in one day, the community came together and supplied way more toppings than we could use. We have enough to supply the teachers at the end of the year also with that. And so I would like to thank Whole Foods um, store in Hadley and Panera Bread in Hadley. Um, as well as Big Y and Stop and Chop, and of course Harold's for their diff seven different types of ice cream. And also, we were just a little under what we needed, and um, city councilors Jesse Adams and Ryan O'Donnell happened to show up at quite a few school events, and they also offered to donate um, some of the funding so that the kids could have a really nice time. And the only other person was Sharon Carlson, who also did that. And she said that it was as an executive board committee of the Massachusetts Teachers Association, so she donated that. Thank you, all of those donation donators. And let me just double check. I'm thinking we're almost done. Nope. On the 29th, Bridge Street School celebrated their 100th anniversary. An anniversary. Many community community members were there, including um, Superintendent Provost, Mayor Narkowitz, and then um, some of the school committee members, uh, myself, Howard, Laura, Pam, Ann. And it was a really nice time, and we got to hear people who had been there for years and years and years. So our community has been very, very busy right now, and I think we are just about done. The only other thing I wanted to say is that something's happening with MTA. You have to look it up. I'm not really sure what it is, but somebody said look it up, and I haven't had a chance to. But MTA is working on saying no to um, the MCAS testing as far as it being a graduation requirement. And right before I got here, I heard something on the news about that, too. <coughs> so something to keep in mind. And the other thing is, this is the end of the school year. If you want to go to the Northampton website, you look up the different schools. There are a lot of different activities that are happening at the schools right now that um, graduations are happening, end of year community meetings, celebrations, Leeds just had a picnic, a community picnic. There's an awful lot of things that are happening and I'm hoping that everybody feels welcome to come and, and attend. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other announcements? Okay, hearing none, uh, we will move to the consent agenda for this evening. We have the approval of minutes of the Rules and Policy Subcommittee of May 11th, uh, minutes of the School Committee meeting of May 14th. We have two <coughs> contracts uh, and, and, and or transfer approvals. We have a contract for School Nurse Supply Incorporated, vision screeners and audio meters for the elementary schools for $16,444. And then we have a budget transfer uh, to cover utility expenses. Under field trip requests, we have the Leeds fourth grade going to the Connecticut Science Center in Hartford on June 18th. We have the NHS Invent team going to Eureka Fest at MIT in Cambridge on June 18th through the 21st. And we have the NHS girls soccer going to Pierce Camp Birchmont in Wolfboro, New Hampshire, August 29th through the 31st of 2015. Uh, is there a motion to accept the consent agenda? Motion to accept the consent agenda. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any uh, any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. The consent agenda is adopted, and I will now uh, move into the reports and recommendations. And I note that uh, Jason Berg and Stan Shapiro are both here from the Northampton Education Foundation. And uh, we are here to welcome them this evening to present us with information. Uh, be, I believe Jason will present first on the NEF Small Grant Awards. Hello. Um, Jason Berg, I'm here representing the NEF Small Grants Committee. Um, I believe you've all received copies of the grants that we've approved. We've approved on our side. Uh, this year we've awarded 12 grants totaling $26,033.99. Two are for JFK, two for the high school, one for Smith Volk, five for the elementary school, 
one for the preschool and one that's mixed between elementary and preschool, or uh, elementary and middle school, I'm sorry. Um, we hope you approve these grants. Excellent. So um, as is customary, we um, I'll entertain a motion to accept uh, these gifts. I'd uh, like to move to accept the gifts from the NEF with extreme gratitude, <coughs> not only the financial, but the amount of time and energy that you put into doing and working for it. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. OK. Any, um, any discussion or questions uh, for our friends from NEF? I would just like to thank you guys for doing this. It was, it was really great going to the uh, showcase you had last, was it just last week or two weeks ago? Last week. Last week. Recently. Yeah. And it's very impressive, um, you know, sort of all the energy and enthusiasm for learning that is unleashed by the dollars that you have provided. You know, that, um, it's really, really wonderful to see um, sort of how much happens as a result of the money. Mr. Ball? Um, well, I just wanted to agree with um, Mr. Moore and also say that on my whole list of paperwork here, I had meant to mention what a wonderful showcase that the NEF had last week. Yeah? And it was fabulous to see all of the different um, projects together. I mean, I know that you do an awful lot of things, but to see it all together and the excitement in the room and the kids in the room, it was just incredible. And thank you very much for having that. Thank you for all you do. I mean, it's one thing to see all this and this, but to see it all over at the Look Park House together, it was just awesome what you all do. So thank you. Any other uh, questions or comments on the small grants? OK. So hearing none, all those in favor of accepting the uh, gifts from NEF for small grants, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? OK, so that's approved. Thank you, Jason. And now I'll turn to uh, uh, not only NEF member, but no, but I wanted to note he's also a former school committee member. Uh, some of you, uh, mm -hmm. I think Lisa probably served with you. Lisa would go. Watched you. Uh, and so uh, stands here to present the, um, the endowment grants. So uh, we have uh, awarded $66,160 this year in endowment grants. Mm -hmm. And I'll just make a comment. I've been uh, working on NEF grants for a long time, and this is the ninth year of our endowment grants. And I just want to comment at how incredibly impressed I was by the applicants this year. There were several groups of teachers who, whose presentations just showed unbelievable commitment and knowledge about the field, and they were amazingly erudite and anxious to work hard uh, in the service of our students. It was really impressive. Uh, we have five grants. One is Caught Off Guard, uh, just a theater troupe in the high school that um, uh, does research about social issues and then creates skits about them. We're funding them for two years. Uh, the second was a modify, to modify the NHS biology curriculum, and this is the biology teachers, the aides, the English language learning uh, teacher, the special ed teachers, all working together to modify the curriculum so all students can take part of it. Energize Northampton is the fourth grader, the fourth grade teachers around the system working with the Hitchcock Center to uh, create a unit about energy and alternative energy. Uh, expanded use of computers for the JFK special needs students, which provides Chromebooks for special needs students. Follows up on our grant last year to train JFK teachers in the use of Chromebooks. And the second year of a three-year grant to support the outdoor gardens at all the elementary schools. So all really exciting projects. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Stan. Uh, could I have a motion regarding the endowment fund grants? Move to approve the um, NEF endowment grants. As a, and accepting them as a gift. As and gifts. accepting them yeah. as a gift, yes. Okay. Is there a second? A second. Okay. Any uh, discussion about these projects or these grants? Like yeah, please. I guess two things, aside from thank you profoundly. <clears throat> um, how amazing I think these are. Um, <coughs> my own children have benefited from the, the gardens, and it's just great. But also, I want to really thank you for honoring Tom Jordan in this gift, um, in honor of him. <coughs> That's just lovely. He was such an active parent in this community with NEF, and I just, um, it's just lovely that you acknowledged him. I'm glad you caught that. And Tom was a member of our committee and who died suddenly this, uh, this year. Thank you. Okay, so there's been a motion made and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 
Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Thank you very much again, uh, Stan and Jason. Thank you. And to all of NEF. <coughs> Okay, the next item on the agenda is we have a uh, field trip, um, and this is a uh, Northampton High School students traveling to Rome and Athens. It's uh, April 13th through the 21st of 2016, um, and I believe uh, because this is a new trip, uh, Mr. Lombardi is here um, to, uh, to answer any questions about it or present any information that the committee may want. Um. <clears throat> Thank you. Good to see you guys tonight. Um, I, I believe I did submit um, the brochure. So I hope you guys got copies of the brochure with your stuff. Okay. I'm um, proposing a, a nine day trip. Um, it's the same organization I've used um, for the last um, four years. This will be year five, um, Education First. Um, I had students approach me from other trips interested in doing something. We touched on some ideas, and a combination of Rome to Athens came up. Um, I contacted the company and a tour director I know, and this was one that was recommended as a really um, fantastic, fun trip that gives the students um, some nice experiences to some historical and artistic um, sites they, they've read about and heard about and would love to see. And so I'm here to ask for permission to continue um, bringing students abroad. Um, getting a lot of positive feedback from the students. Um, last night I had a meeting um, telling students about it and 25 students um, had interest. Um, I was at a recent um, NEF meeting, um, actually our, our DIP meeting, and some of the people there were saying they hope this continues when, they get, when their children come up. I think they like having these opportunities. And the last couple of years we've been able to put, um, put out two to three trips um, for our students to um, overseas opportunities. As you know, next year we have one trip going to Cambodia um, with Kate Dollard, I believe, um, not with um, Kate Todd Hunter, excuse me, but I believe um, Kate um, Dollard is maybe looking to put a Costa Rica trip together as well. Questions? Blue. Any questions? Mr. I do, yeah. Of the 25 students that had interest, um, what criteria are you using? Um, I mean, any kids, is it a certain I mean, class, is it? This type of trip, I like to leave it open. And one of the things I said to the parents last night, what I find that's great about this trip, um, you know, high school teenagers, no matter how you like to swing it, have cliques. They, 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 they separate, right? And Northampton is a phenomenal school that we, um, those barriers are very low and limited. But it naturally happens if you're involved in theater or certain sports or a grade, those things just naturally separate. What I've found by having um, kind of, a, um, it's open nine through 12, you see students kind of blend together. It's Northampton, you, you know, and freshmen are getting to know sophomores and juniors and seniors. And it's really neat seeing that, that combination of students coming together. If anything, what I'll, when we've gone and there's been other schools, um, other schools, um, tour group leaders constantly say, consistently say to me, you know, your kids are great. What, what's, what's going on here? And, and we, we really do gel and um, break down those barriers. And I think that's part of the experience of this trip. And how many kids um, are, are allowed to go with the end? I mean, what's, what's your projection as far as who's going and how many? And then the um, ratio for adult to? Yeah, it's, it's a one to, one to six, one to eight ratio we, we look for of adult. Um, last year, we took 24. So right now, I'm on, I'm on that. You know, and, and j actually, I would love to take a whole tour. If I could take 40 and have enough faculty and have my own bus, I would love that because then you have more power with the company to get a little more, you know, you have a little more economic pull. I want this, I want that. And so, you know, you're able to get maybe different access fees to certain, you know, museums or something. So if that ever happened, you know, as long as we, I have um, appropriate staffing, um, I, do, I can't find it right off. Um, what's the approximate cost of this trip? Um, 3100 <coughs> 3100 That's not bad. Okay, and with it being that, and you said that you would take up to 40 if, if you could find everybody. Well, let's say we can't, and let's say 40 kids want to come, but you can only take 30. What criteria would you use to drop it, off the it, last it, it, doesn't, it doesn't really work that way. I, I, I tell, we, we sign up, we sign up, and the company then, you know, um, would make that work. So as many kids as want to go to this, can, oh wow, congratulations. Yeah, I mean, that, it doesn't work the way. Okay, I mean, what they do is, is they, they fill a bus. Right. And so um, a typical tour bus is about 45, 47. So last year I had 24, my last trip last year to Spain, we had um, 24 total, I believe. And so then the, the other um, 14 or 13 was another school. 
And if we had 30, 35, they might say, you know what, that's enough, we can't find a school. They would never say, here's your limit, take some away. No, they're, they're gonna want you know, to make sure it works for us. It's a business. When is the trip? It's, um, we always go. Um, it's on the, it's I don't have the flyer we, we leave, um, It's April 13th. Wednesday evening before April vacation and come back on um, the Thursday of April vacation. Um, it's hard to fit something in within the, the, the constraints of vacation. Um, you know, I try to limit it before, but I also think it's equally important to get back a few days before vacation ends so the students can unwind and adjust with the, with the time difference so they start school fresh. Um, so I found that to be the best balance. And um, also fundraisers would be my question, and also um, kids that are economically maybe a little yep. more So we, we fundraise yeah. for, um, you know, um, this is the cost. It's an all-inclusive, so this is round ship airlines. It's um, all hotel accommodations, le um, breakfast and dinner included, a full-time 24-hour um, tour director, um, the, the bus driver, the, the bus. Um, there's an overnight ferry that takes you from Italy to, to Athens, to, to Greece. Um, and there's also that also gets you into certain sites, the, um, the Colosseum, um, Roman ruins, um, Olympia, the Acropolis, etc. Um, there's things that that doesn't cover are tips. There's daily tips per student for the um, tour director and the bus driver. We fundraise for that. So the last few years, what we, I've been able to do is fundraise to cover all the costs of the um, the tips that aren't included, so that when we get there, students only have to worry about their own spending money, and we're not trying to gather money. It, it takes a lot of pressure off, off that. Um, this is um, it's three thousand dollars. There's really not a mechanism, you know, f for that. I can tell you that by starting a trip this far out gives families um, opportunities to raise money the best the best they can. Right, and, and with that and following that, um, do we have any fundraisers or anything that we could offer the families for themselves to participate to help them to, to progress that way towards getting it? No. I, I, don't, I mean, the amount of work and time it takes to raise enough money and tips couple thousand dollars it's an it's an amazing amount of hours I don't know where to begin honestly to, to create fundraising activities for other students okay um, has it been done in the past do you know <coughs> fundraising because I had thought that it had been in the, in the no. past we've, so. we've always done fundraising for the students that have signed up to go to, to raise money for them to, to for that trip but there's been no fundraising activities for you know, general fundraising caused for other students? Well, in the past, um, actually, I, I do recall that it has been, um, like, scholarship positions or something has been. I think it, I think it depends <coughs> on the trip. Now, for, the, for these trips that I've done with this organization, that, that hasn't been the case. That hasn't been the case. Yeah. Okay, so the school itself isn't going to do anything to help support the students who do want to go but can't financially afford to go as far as helping them guide as far as school-sanctioned fundraisers that they themselves can do. But, you know, I mean, if I were to go out and sell candy bars, as me, as versus going out to sell it as a, I think, as I a think school. It would be a very daunting, we know we don't, and I think it would be a very daunting task, for example, to sell, you know, $3,180 in candy bars. That was just an example. You no, know, but, but for one student. Right. I think fundraising, you know, is extreme, it is a daunting, timely task. I think it would be very hard. I think, um, I, I hear your, what you're saying. It'd be nice to be able to bring a variety of students, but, um, it's just really something that, that is not, you know, um, I think timely or possible in terms of s students and getting people together. Do we have any trips that, that allow for the lower economic kids in our, to be able to have similar experiences, you know, where we actually help? We have our, our normal field trips that, that go by classes, um, by, by Montreal. Montreal, I think, for um, maybe for um, eighth grade. That might that might be a possibility. So at the high school, I mean at the junior high school, then they have Montreal where they do it. I was, I was wondering if they had any any no. no financial, maybe something to look into. You know. Miss Fallon, you've been waiting patiently. <laughs> I yeah. just my only concern is um, the drinking age being 16. What what is the policy? For school school rules. School rules. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, and it's listen, it's like it's like anything else. You know, there's. The, any event that we have and any, any, whether you're in school or football games or proms, school rules are school rules. And if someone decides to make a bad choice, then our school rules apply. Now, granted, we're in a foreign country, so if, you know, then what happens is we deal with it then in terms of behavior, parents are informed, and we deal with the results when we get back. But yeah, we don't let anything, you know, it's not like when in Rome, 
That's, that's no, kind of no, what no. I was <laughs> 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 we're, we're in Rome. You're in Northampton. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Any other questions for Mr. Lombardi before we um, vote on approving this trip? And I think I'll need a motion to approve the trip. I'd like to move to approve the trip to um, Rome. Oh, I did have one more question on it, though. Well, I can make a motion to make the motion. We'll okay, I'd like to make a motion to approve the trip for Mr. Lombardi to take children to Rome, students to Rome, and Athens. Greece. Athens. Athens, Greece. Yes, in a an around April vacation next year. Okay. Is there a second? I do. It comes after this. Okay. Uh, the motion's been made and seconded. You can ask your question. Okay. Um, for the days that they're there, um, is, is every day planned tightly? Do they have any time, like, with alone? I mean, not alone, alone, alone with the chaperone, but, I mean, is, do they all stay together? Every day is extremely planned. As, as I tell the students and families, if you want to relax, stay home. You, you know, um, $3,100 is a good amount of money, and when you get off that plane, you're hitting it. And, and it is packed, you know, um, sometimes there's 645, 630 wake-up calls, and you're going, and you're... You know, you pack in as much history and sites in as possible. Um, every day there is built-in free time, and how the free time works will be, um, imagine going to Boston, you go to Faneuil Market, and you know, I think we've hopefully been to Faneuil Market, and you go there and you walk around the square and you show them the food place, then you come back to a central spot. All right, guys, we just watched Faneuil Market, remember the corners that we came to, remember that site, remember the pizzeria. We're gonna be back here at 12.45. You're gonna have an hour, hour and a half off, depending to get lunch. Um, I'll take our students, I'll say, all right, we have rules that you have to be in at least pairs of two. And I, I, I say, I want to see the groupings and tell me what you're doing really quickly. I'm going to go to that gelato stop. I'm going to go to that store and get some food. I'm just going to go sit in the sun. I'm going to go look at that street performer that was drawing people over there. And then they do that. And then chaperones, we walk around, um, you know, keeping, you know, a general eye. Um, these are high tourist areas that, again, before they get that free time, we've walked around and they've had it scoped out. Same thing if you were in Northampton, you start the Academy of Music, you walk up the street to the bridge, come back. All right, guys, here's your free time. We're going to meet back here and run that way. So um, one other question, maybe one. The annual, is this an annual trip, um, this type of trip here? Is you trying to try to make it annual between the 9th and 12th? I mean, because it's more open than any of the other trips that sure. you've seen, most of them. Are yeah, more um, all the trips that I've done, again, this is my fifth one, uh, <coughs> has been April vacation, and it has been more open. You, you know, where there's, you, you're not having to do interviews. I, I think that, that I've had the last two trips have, have drawn, I'm um, getting now students that want to come back repeat because they know that, hey, I, you know, I, I can go every other year. Um, I've had now some. So you can go every other year, is that what, could they go every year or is it, okay. I think, I think if we can offer an opportunity and, you know, uh, one of the things I've heard from parents is like they hope this continues. I think that if parents or families know that there's an opportunity coming up and we go to the high school and they have these trips every April, they can start saving. They can start thinking about it, you know. Um, so right now I have, I have a parent that's um, now their, their younger daughter is coming. You know, and I, and I said I was at a recent meeting and parents were saying, I really hope this is there, this, this opportunities are there for my children to get up there. Well, it, so, my questions are partially selfish. My daughter's going into the eighth grade next year. Yeah. This sounds like a wonderful opportunity. Yeah. Is there any reason that um, some kids might not be allowed to go? I mean, is there, do you have any reason that you could think of that? Um, I, I haven't run into that. I mean, I, I, I would suppose if there was a student that I felt was a, um, a safety risk or, I mean, I, yeah, I, I, I haven't found that out yet. Okay. You know, um, clearly, if there's ever something that can, had me concerned for well-being, safety, travel purposes, I, w I would address that like I would for any student going on any any trip. Um, you know, outside of the school, I would have that. I might have that same thing for a student going on a field trip to, you know, Amherst. So um, you know how we have special education kids, and they have um, aides that go with them and whatnot. Is this open to them and their aides also? If both of them come up with that thirty-one hundred dollars. So we have the accommodations can all be met for anyone. There's no reason nobody other than possible behavioral issues would be precluded from going if they wanted to and could afford it. Yeah, and this is a private company. And if they wanted to come and there was things of helping, you know, um, I, I work with the nurse in terms of any health issues. You know, um, again, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nurse. So if there was significant medical things that needed attention, we'd have to figure out how that would look. Um, do we take a nurse with us? I know we do on field school trips, but do we have to have a nurse with us on that? Well, I'm saying if there was a student that required an accommodation that was very medical, and that was an IEP, I think that would have to, we'd have to sit down and figure that, that piece out. Um, again, 
I haven't run into that. I've had students, um, we haven't had any behavioral issues. It's open, yeah, so if a student that was on an IEP and had a, an aid, and, and they were able to fund for that to come, ab absolutely. And the only I, other question, is it, can okay. we just finish if it's your If it's your final question. I think I, it is. Okay, that would be helpful. It'd be helpful would, because we Because you have the opportunity to call Mr. Lombardi. But I also think that people, in, that people also need to know, some of the questions I ask aren't What's just on the, me, uh, what we that have. people also need to know that if they're interested in going, this is the opportunity, this is the venue for people out there to know, and that's why I'm asking the question. We have a very full agenda, and okay. we have uh, field trips like this on most of our agenda, so I want to make sure we are mindful of the agenda. Okay, have you, do, have you had other people from, I mean, uh, is everybody, do you feel that everybody's been made aware that they can go, including the special ed and, and that type of... of um, I, I broadly advertise it through announcements. I have posters up that says if you're interested in going on a, a, a trip, <coughs> a meeting here, and you know, I, I, have I specifically said um, if you're a special ed student on an IEP and you want to come? No, I haven't, I haven't said that, but I, I broadly um, put it out there. Um, and, I, and honestly, I imagine I have, I, I know I have students that have um, a variety of, you know, I, get, I have a wide variety of students. I, 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 would, I, would, I would say that in terms okay. of that. I don't think, um, and I, I think that I'm approachable, and I would hope the school is approachable, that if someone had a question, they'd feel comfortable at least to say, hey, I have a, I have a question. Um, we definitely don't put any limitations out there that says, you know, for only this type of student. Um, you know, I think it's, if the school can offer an opportunity to go in a safe experience, experience part of the world and a culture, and we can do that, the more the merrier, it adds to the whole, the whole experience. Thank you very much. And part of it is right now you've just now set that out to everybody and hopefully their questions are asked because I get asked a lot of questions that I don't know the answers to because... Steer them to any, any time. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Any other uh, questions for Ms. Lombardi? Uh, the motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. Ciao. 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 <laughs> Okay, so the um, next item on the agenda is the acceptance of a gift. Uh, this is from the Heart of the Valley Chorus, and it's a $350 gift for the JFK Band and Chorus. Anything more to add, uh, no, Ms. Walzak? That's not it, except to note that they are looking for the deposit to go into the student activity account, which is appropriate to do so that the monies are combined with other band and chorus monies rather than having multiple accounts. Excellent. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to accept the gift of the Heart of Valley Chorus, 350 for JFK band and chorus to go into the student activities account. Is there a second? Second. Okay. <laughs> Any discussion? All those in favor of accepting the gift, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any um, anyone abstaining? Okay, uh, that one is approved. Next is another gift. This is from Jeremy Whalen. It's video and audio equipment for the NHS Tech Department. I know. Is there a motion? I'll move to. Go ahead. Okay, I'll move to accept the um, gift from Jeremy Whalen for video audio equipment for the Northampton High School Tech Department. Is there a second? Second. Do you have any information on this one, Ms. Walton? No, you've got an itemized list of the equipment exactly. attached. Okay. I would like to add with gratitude, we can always use video audio equipment in our school, so thank you very much. Okay. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so that gift is, uh, is accepted. We also have a gift from UMass Amherst 2,000 headsets um, and uh, make a motion to approve the 2,000 headsets from UMass Amherst. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, Mr. Rota is here. I don't know if anyone needs an explanation of these headsets, uh, but he can approach and give us a quick understanding. I was uh, contacted by the university. Uh, they, through a grant, somehow received something like 40,000 headsets. Uh, and they contacted the local schools, Western Mass, uh, to ask them if they would like some. And at first I said, well, I could take 500. They said, you sure you wouldn't like more? I said, well, how about 2,500? They said, well, we can do 2,000. So uh, we went over. It took us two or three trips to bring them all over. Uh, but I think they're going to be wonderful 
for the schools because in our labs we don't have headsets. These are nice COS headsets, which are not foam, but they're uh, like a vinyl leather type, so they are easy to clean, easy to maintain. They have a built-in microphone as well. Uh, and they also have a little plug that'll go into a Chromebook or another type of laptop that would only have one plug. This will allow two plugs so you can use both the headphone and the microphone. So thinking about online programs, <coughs> multimedia productions, all kinds of things, uh, I think they'll be very useful in all the schools. Uh, and we certainly will be able to use them. Excellent. Question, Ms. Minnick? Is there, a, I assume that someone will be, that there will be a way to make sure that they don't sprout legs and just go home with people? Well, Not that I would uh, suspect any of our students of that or our teachers, but I guess I'm just saying, I, you know, when you have a, a lot of them, is, will there be a way to catalog them or store them? Well, safely we distribute so many to each school we know how many are in each school the uh, elementary tech integration folks will be working with the students and, and they'll keep be keeping an eye on them they'll know where they are who has them uh, and so I think they'll be they'll I mean be and I asked that question not just about these but about all of the technology equipment sure that we're approving tonight and that we have been approving in the last couple of months mm -hmm. We've, it's it's been an area in which we've been lacking and now <coughs> we're finally trying to catch up with some hardware I just want to be sure that we're being careful with it okay any other questions about the headsets hearing none all those in favor of accepting the gift of headsets please say aye aye with gratitude opposed any except anyone abstaining I don't hear that so okay uh, the next is another gift, and you can stay there, Mr. Rhoda. This is a gift of 20 iMac computers. This is from Smith College. I'd like and to make a motion to accept the 20 iMac computers from Smith College. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Same with this? Yes. Uh, Jeremy Whalen had approached uh, the president of Smith College and asked if they had any equipment. We have been re the recipient of donations in the past from Smith College in the form of recent model iMac computers. Uh, I followed up with the representatives from Smith College and they are willing to give us 20 late model uh, iMac 22 inch desktops which would be very useful for the high school. Uh, that's probably where they're going to end up uh, because we need them in the tech lab and we also need them. Uh, Mr. Eldridge is doing some new kinds of programs in the theater area they would be very handy there as well, uh, and so we'd like to accept them, and, and uh, we'll spruce them up a little bit. They do need a little bit of upgrading, but a minor amount, and uh, they'll be off and running, and it's a great thing for us. Okay. Any uh, questions about that? I have a question. Are all 20 of the computers going to be going to the tech department? I mean, we also have the um, photography and other arts programs. I was wondering if it was just one or is it? Is it yes, that whole area, the uh, multimedia area that Jeremy is in, mm -hmm. uh, 10 will be going there. And we project that the remaining 10 will be going to Mr. Eldridge in the theater department. Oh. And uh, I did ask if there might be any future donations, and they said check back in September or October. So we may be uh, on the receiving end of some more, which would be great. That's great. Okay, so um, any, any other further discussion? If not, um, all those in favor of accepting these uh, used IMACs from Smith College, uh, please say aye. 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 Attitude. Opposed? Okay, those are approved, and thank you very much, Mr. Rhoda. Thank you. Next, we have a gift. It's gift night. We have a gift from Florence Pizza, uh, $350, and it's for a, oh, sorry, $550, I need my reading glasses, for JFK Water Bottle Filling Station. Ms. Walzak? Yes, these next two gifts are actually related. As part of the curriculum at the middle school, the students have started to learn about not using throwaway bottles and using containers that can be refilled. So this was actually an idea that came forth from the kids that they would like to have one installed in the building. We're hopeful that going forward, we will be able to put additional units in based on the budget. But this was something that the students were involved in doing and wanted to 
put the fundraising effort into. So the first donation, as mentioned, is from Florence Pizza and Family Restaurant for the 550. This also will be deposited into the Student Activity Fund to combine with the funds that the students raised for this project and be able to make that purchase. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to accept the gift from Florence Pizza for 550 and the gift, can I combine them? For the other one, she combined them kind of. And the gift for $50 from Greg and Kathy Malinowski for the JFK Water bottle filling station um, and to be given to the student activity fund. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor of except Ms. Minnick. Um, oh, I was going to say uh, I love this because this actually translates as a community service learning project that came from the kids. So. Excellent. Sure. How much does it cost more? I think it's about 750. Okay. There's an ongoing cost with filters that have to be replaced every five or six thousand bottles, and we'll be picking that up within the maintenance budget. <coughs> Mr. Moore, I'm sorry. Um, so, where do they? Where do you install this? Is it replace a current, you know, bubbler, or is it a different? Kind of I'm not sure where this one's going. I've worked with these for a couple of years, and usually they replace a current bubbler so that they do double. Again, I'm not sure on this one, but typically also they do double bubbler. duty. They have the bubbler, and the water filling station is in the back. And what they typically have is a counter, mm -hmm. so the kids can also see how many times they've filled a bottle, which indicates again back to the you know the water savings or plastic savings plastic. they've done. Excellent. Okay. I just have one more question. The water bottles, are they supposed to be getting them from home, or are we going to be selling them at the school store or something so that they can have them? Or, or, I mean, and I we don't know yet. I don't know that. <clears throat> okay, all those in favor of accepting these two gifts for toward the water bottle filling station, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so thank you to Florence Pizza and to uh, the Malinowskis. Okay, next we have a vote, um, and this is to grant the superintendent budget transfer authority to close out the FY15 books. And I will defer to either the superintendent or Ms. Walzak. Again, this is uh, to allow them to make end of year transfers within budget line items in order to, uh, in order to true up the budget as it's closed out. So I would say this is just a pro forma sort of vote. Um, under our current transfer policy, we, there is the uh, stipulation that the school committee would vote in the June meeting to uh, allow the superintendent and business manager to uh, exceed the $10,000 cap on transfers. The reason for that is we will not meet again before the end of the um, fiscal year. I'd like to make a motion to um, allow the superintendent to exceed the $10,000 limit as part of the effort to consolidate funding of the utility accounts and make the end of the year balanced and to close the FY15 books. Okay. Um, okay. Is there a second on that motion? Second. Okay. So. Can I clarify, is the motion, are you offering the motion that's on the agenda the, about just granting the superintendent budget transfer authority to close the FY15 books? Right, and also okay. in the um, letter it says it, it's because it, okay. it is above 10,000 limits. But that doesn't necessarily have to be in the motion. I'm okay. concerned about how the motion will read for the public reading the minutes and our clerk who's trying to get it. So is it okay to contain your motion to just what's on the agenda? That's fine. Okay. Uh, so there's been a motion in the seconder doesn't mind. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. So that uh, superintendent is granted that authority. Uh, next is the uh, vote authorizing the superintendent to author to execute all contracts and amendments for the planned JFK uh, natatorium renovations. And natatorium is course our aquatic center um, is there a is there a motion to put that on the floor I make a motion to authorize superintendent to execute all contracts and amendments to the plan JFK mandatorium renovations okay is there a second okay yes Ms. Minnick did I do we know what those renovations and changes are did I miss that well, primarily it's the Dectron 
uh, that we've been talking about for the last several years. It's part of the capital budget. That's the biggest piece of it, which is the air handling and air quality. I, is that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any questions about this one? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so that one is approved. Um, next, we have a uh, vote, and this is a request uh, to postpone a retirement uh, by James McGuire. And I'll ask the superintendent to provide the information on this one. James McGuire is a custodian at Ryan Road School. He had submitted a letter of retirement under the understanding that his 15 year anniversary would be June 30th. Um, he has since learned that that's not his 15 year anniversary and so he is um, forfeiting a significant amount of retirement benefits. He has, request, he has requested postponing his retirement um, until after the June 30th date. His actual 15 year anniversary occurs sometime in the month of August. Um, it's, it, it appears as though it was just a misunderstanding and a miscommunication um, when he originally filed his retirement request. And um, I am in support of a vote to allow him to postpone the retirement, or actually be a vote to um, rescind the acceptance of the retirement. Mm -hmm. yep. I'd like to make a motion to rescind the original retirement um, letter and allow him to postpone it, James McGuire, to postpone it until, do we have to say when? We do not, no, okay, he's just good, asking to rescind. It's in there, okay, perfect. Second. Okay, any discussion on this one? Okay, all those in favor, uh, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so that one is accepted. We now have a series of reports uh, from the Rules and Policy Subcommittee, um, and including votes now on the, uh, on the various uh, policy revisions. Um, we can take them one at a time. The first is the Public Gifts to the Schools, uh, KCD, as revised. And I'll turn to the Chair, Ms. Minnick. If you'd like to uh, walk us through each one of these as we, as we take votes. I know you've already done it in previous meetings, but if there's anything more to add. Well, actually, um, so public gifts to the schools was on our agenda for last month for a vote. We had <coughs> a couple of amend amendments made to it at the meeting, mm -hmm. but then we got into a discussion and we chose to postpone discussion of this or postpone the vote and further discussion of this particular policy until tonight's meeting. Now, I don't know, um, we, we can take up the discussion of where we left off at our last meeting, but it's my understanding from the superintendent that we also have a legal question that we'd like to have more time to investigate, and so maybe we will end up postponing this again. I don't know if you want to go through the the other discussion topics or take other amendments to it, or if you just want to postpone the whole thing and wait until we have the ruling on the legal question. I'd like to be reminded about the what the rule what, what we're waiting on on the legal. I, what are you talking about about the legal question? <laughs> I'll let I, I will defer to the superintendent to answer that if he doesn't mind. Okay. Not at all. So this question actually arose yesterday um, when I was in discussions with Joe Cook, the city procurement officer, regarding another potential gift. Um, and he had asked, which would be a directed gift, and he had asked if we had um, taken any action to address some of the concerns the committee had had in the past concerning directed gifts. And I told him that we actually did have a policy that was in the midst of um, review shared it with him, and he raised a question about whether the policy should actually require two tracks, one that would require um, financial gifts to be handled one way, and a second one that would require gifts of material goods to be handled differently. Um, so I posed that question to the school committee attorney, and since it's only come up yesterday, we haven't had a chance for exhaustive legal review on that. I just, um, why would they, why, I mean, why would they want to consider it differently? I mean, why would, what would be the benefit? Because there's some, um, there's some question as to whether material gifts would also have to be accepted by the city council after being accepted by the school committee. Such as, just for example, the water 
cooler tonight if, if that was if they that was money it wasn't, that was money it wasn't oh but if they had actually given us the water cooler then we might have to go to city council i mean i'm just that's trying the question we're investigating okay all right so uh, is a motion can we make a motion to postpone please i th i think my question to the committee was that's one issue that is yet to be determined there was another issue that we were discussing at our last meeting it was actually a concern that mr moore had and i don't know whether we're whether you still have that concern i have something here right that's says, what i was going to propose if we were going to discuss this policy tonight but so the question is do we want to go ahead and discuss the policy tonight in terms of this and still wait for the answer on the legal issue or do you want to just postpone discussion about this policy altogether I'd like to postpone the, it only because we already have a rules and policy meeting coming up on the 30th so when we come again we can be more prepared with everything I mean it doesn't do any harm to postpone it and then we when we come we can present exactly what we have with the knowledge that's just my opinion I'd like to make a motion to postpone it okay that's a motion so now that requires a second so is there anyone who wishes to second that motion I'd second it okay all those in favor of question <laughs> so I, I, I'm, I'm fine with postponing that's not the issue but my concern is something that you said which was that we have a rules and policy subcommittee meeting and that we would come back more this policy has already been referred mm -hmm. to the board and has a motion pending for approval of this we can make an amendment in the full school committee or this policy can be referred back to the subcommittee but right now it's no longer in the subcommittee's purview it belongs to the full committee now so it makes no difference whether we have a meeting or a no meeting because the legal opinion will come to the full school committee so as the chair of the of the uh, rules and policy which would you recommend doing taking it back and letting it just go right back through us or just leaving it right here and just waiting for right the legal here until we hear from an attorney okay so, so there's no other issues other than that one that we have to work with? There's an amendment that an amendment. Mr. Moore wanted right. to propose, but he said he would do that when we discuss this policy in full, yeah. which we're not going to do. So the motion to postpone till our next meeting seems in order to me. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? Okay, so that matter will be postponed mm -hmm. to your next meeting. Uh, next, we have the vote on the school-based management uh, policy, CFD, as revised. <coughs> yeah, find all Second. I'll be there. Okay. Um, this particular policy was presented to you um, for information at our last meeting. Tonight would be the, the night that we would vote on it. So um, given that, I move and the rules and policy committee subcommittee recommends approval of this policy C I'm sorry CFD CFD um, yeah second it. Policy. <laughs> okay so there's been a motion made it's been seconded and Ms. Fallon has a question or a comment um, so I understand that many of the changes that were made to this policy CFD were due to the fact that some aspects of it um, were not being followed or enforced um, but having had the opportunity to sit down with the district um, PTO leadership twice this month um, I can assure you that they're now both aware of and committed to um, holding elections for the school council um, at their respective <coughs> schools so I move that we amend this policy to include the language um, that's taken directly from Massachusetts General Law Chapter 71 Section 59C by inserting at the end of the third paragraph um, parent members of school councils will be chosen in elections held by the local recognized parent teacher organization under the direction of the principal second. just so it's very clear in the wording I'll second that <coughs> So, third so at the end of the third okay. paragraph, the, where one, that, it the says, one that begins as enacted by, uh huh, okay. and at the end of where it says school committee. Okay. So there's been a motion made and seconded, and Ms. Minnick, you have a question. I do. 
if I heard you correctly, it said that the election would be conducted by the PTOs. Is that for under the that? Yeah, I mean, this is. Would you just read that one more time? You said it was taken directly. From yeah, it's verbatim from the Massachusetts general law. The entire statement is verbatim mm -hmm. from the law. Parent okay. members of school councils will be chosen in elections held by the local recognized parent teacher organization under the direction of the principal. Um, because they were they were a little bit nervous about the fact that that had been taken out of. I'm just curious. I didn't know that all schools necessarily had a PTO, and I just they I, don't. Ours, they ours don't. Do. There is more to that. So okay. this, this is the statement that's taken. It is out of context, and I have the original long version. Um, but it, I, the laws are written and kind of run on sentences. So to take <laughs> so to take the one sentence was a paragraph. So I just took the part. So if you're more comfortable with having the whole sentence because Probably there are not we do have PTOs right. I just was concerned. there are accommodations if yeah. you don't have a PTO there's a process and but I didn't think that that applied but we can certainly include that sentence if we need to and and I guess is if you're instructing if, if we're writing policy that now instructs the PTOs to do something do we need to tell them how it's supposed to be done or so, should we reference the law so that they can go look it up for themselves how it's supposed to be done? Because I don't know how they would determine the slate of candidates, how they would have the election, who's voting, you know, uh, what constitutes a majority, et cetera. But I don't think we have to say the how. Isn't I that think the policy? That's the part I don't, it's under I don't the direction want to be saying the how. That's yeah. exactly sure. my concern. But if we put in our policy that the PTOs have to do it, then don't we have to give them? No, that's the problem. Well, so, even so there is more information available. The SE website has pages and pages of questions and answers. But I think that the part where it says under the direction of the principal and that the mm -hmm. the principal except is specifically defined in the law shall have the responsibility for the finding of the composition of and forming the group pursuant to that representative process. Mm -hmm. The principal would decide how many members of how many parents, how many teachers, how many community that members. I know about, but how does the can the superintendent uh, weigh in on this quickly? Yes, please. So the policy that is before you describes or, or I shouldn't say describes but just um, reflects that the, the whole formation of the school council is under the direction of the principal the principal is supposed to describe a process that's accepted by the superintendent and reviewed by the school committee so in this case it, um, what what the principal would need to do is explain how the PTO is going to run the election at his or her school which may be different at different schools, um, but it would still, it would be not upon the committee to define a process for the principal, it would be upon the principal to define a process and bring it to the committee for their approval. I guess what would make me most comfortable is if there were some reference to the law in which the statement that you read is located. Just so that it's principal and or the law, chapter 71 section 15. and we do have other policies where we have reference to a law so it can either be listed as a reference at the bottom of this policy or it can be as per, as per mm -hmm. MGL whatever's whatever citation or C MGL, right there at the right. end of the paragraph yeah. perfect so I, I don't care. So would you like to offer that as a friendly amendment or as an if amendment? If she's willing to accept it as a friendly amendment, that would be great. So uh, what are you proposing that, the, that that particular law just goes at the end cited. of the policy cited? Cited. Or at the end of the sentence. There. Or at the, the end of the sentence. sentence. At the end of the so sentence, the end of the end of the sentence would be my C. preference. Some yeah, I think, that that's a, I think that's a great idea. I didn't know, I didn't know how else to include it. That would be um, great. So it would be parent members of school councils will be chosen in elections held by the local recognized parent teacher organization under the direction of the principal pursuant, per pursuant to Massachusetts general law chapter 71 section 59c do we need an amendment for that or can we just add that I'll accept it as a friendly amendment to the yeah, she, she's the maker of the motion so she can amend her own motion I'm fine with that is that okay with you yes Okay. That's the process I'm struggling to understand. I'll second it like, again. I'm okay. happy with that. A, a friendly okay. amendment means we don't have to take a formal vote on that. Okay. Amendment to your it means amendment. the mayor's had a Just long day. <laughs> 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 Did you catch that, Laura? That I second. Someone okay. So we have a motion uh, to amend this policy. It's been made and seconded. All those in favor of the amendment? Aye. 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 Opposed? 
Any abstentions? Okay, so now we're back to the main uh, <coughs> policy before us. Any uh, questions about the policy as it's been presented by the chair? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of approving this policy, uh, CFD, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, excellent. Next, we have a vote uh, on the social media and electronic communications policy. Oh, sorry, I skipped, I skipped format for SIPs, CFDA, uh, revised. So. Um, and one of the biggest in revisions is that it's not format for SIPs, it's now just called school improvement plans. Okay. Because we did not, we wish to focus on the uh, content rather than the format of said documents. So um, this, again, was taken from two, it's a combination of language from two different policies suggested by the Mass Association of School Committees. It um, focuses on what we would like to see as content in a school improvement plan, and I would like to move, and the Rules and Policy Subcommittee recommends approval by the full school committee of this revised policy CFDA school improvement plans. Second. Okay. Um, so there's been a motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion about this school improvement plan policy? I, I was just hoping you could clarify for um, the public because people were asking why the date change. Um, oh, because um, the superintendent can clarify it. I think better than I can. It, it, so he has a, a good logic for it. Um, one of the things that we would like school and councils to be able to do when they're developing school improvement plans is consider the results of their most recent uh, summative assessments. That data is not available typically till late summer or early fall. By placing the um, deadline as the current policy does in j the middle of summer, um, you're asking school improvement or you're asking school councils to write school improvement plans before they've had a chance to reflect upon the effects of what their previous efforts at school improvement were. So the reason for moving the deadline to October was to um, allow for an opportunity to receive and consider results as part of this improvement planning process. Ms. Minnick. I think when the law regarding school councils and school improvement plans was first put into place, I think we probably expected that it was largely about climate in a school and over the years with the assessments the way they things have gone the school council is now very much responsible for creating a school improvement plan that would include addressing academic and curricular needs as well so his his recommendation makes a great deal of sense okay so is that recommendation in it's the policy in the policy yeah. that was my question got it Okay, all those in favor of approving this policy, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Now we'll move on to uh, UNDD, policy UNDD, uh, which is social media and electronic communications. Is that? How about, I am going to, it's I-J-N-D-D, -D, I think. Yes. yes. Oh. You're right. I, I, I'm sorry. I need the readers. I'm sorry. I'm having a hard time. Happy long. Yeah, it's I J N D D. Exactly. Sorry. Sorry to embarrass you. No problem. Yes, yes. It just means you need the large print agenda. For <laughs> exactly. Um, she did mention in one of her emails that she was down to the smallest font and she still didn't have room for all of our future meeting dates, so I, it, it was a long agenda for this evening. Um, social media and electronic communications, um, as mentioned at our previous meeting, we do have a policy, uh, uh, an authorized user policy in our schools and we have recommendations for students and teachers on those things. but. Uh, while we tried to come up with something a few years back, it kind of hit a pothole and we and never went any farther. This is a newly created policy on social media and electronic communications designed to uh, provide some guidance on uh, for uh, for teachers 
specifically um, in dealing with, with electronic communications outside of school. So, and it was presented to you for your information at the last meeting. I don't think there were, I, I don't recall that there were any concerns or questions brought forth at that time. I did have just the one question, which I still don't really know what the, what the solution is, but the, the situation that I am aware that happens when, uh, particularly on weekends or when there's weather-related changes for when coaches need to change oh, the I scheduling of did, practice. We did have more than a little discussion, didn't we? I but I, I don't really know what the, what the answer is because I understand all the reasons for what's in this policy, except that that particular situation makes it that impossible because frequently the coach would be calling from home the school might be locked up. Um, they probably and they and, and they probably aren't going to be making phone calls to everybody as would be required by this policy. Uh, you know, a mass thing. They're probably just calling a captain who's then calling the team and getting everybody there. And that's a that's a fairly normal scenario. And um, I don't know that it's I don't know that it's a problem that it's happening. But this policy would not allow it. And then I would wonder what. What, what what the teams would do in those situations, you know, so that's that's basically the, the it problem. Says, I, I think would allow the that. discussion that we had was around, uh, well, it was around E, where it says teachers will not give out their private cell phone or home phone numbers without prior approval of the no, district. No, no, no. I think in this. That's in a different the, one. That's, just, that's another conversation we had. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you you it's want the one before D. it, D. Uh, I, it wanted, says, well, I wanted one that's sort of like B and D. Yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to defer to someone else. I'm well, it just <laughs> seems I think there are ways around that. Huh? Right. Just, yeah. just quickly coming to mind. Yeah. 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 There could just be something instituted um, with sports that, for instance, in a situation where there's a question, a captain could call the coach. I don't know. I mean, just, well, that's just that's something quickly off the top of my head. That, that doesn't fly either. I don't have just it. Like, or it says all contact. Uh, no, but I, I, you know, I think no. all my guess, my all I'm saying is I think that we could throw our ways around it. I don't. I know it's not the, once we create a policy. The part where it says it ha all the contact needs to be yes. through the district's devices, yeah. for example, mm -hmm. and in the situation where, uh, which I'm, which I know happens, is on weekends or during holidays <laughs> when the school is locked up, and so that's not what's going to be happening. Um, and. But what if we what if we changed it from except in emergency situations because those are situations you already know and and people like the coach would already have it set up where they have approval from the district to call the team captain they, I mean what if we just changed it from all and out of emergencies I mean because you're right some of those things are needed um, the invent team they need to be able to I'm sure when they're going on their field trip get a hold of some of those kids I mean we don't want to um, not have communication we just want to have safe. Could you say something like in the case of emergency that they have, they're authorized to, con to um, contact whatever, the point person to activate the phone tree so that they're not actually calling just one. They're but setting in motion. It's already emergency says, situation. In except in cases of emergency. And I think that this okay. is, okay. An is, emergency. Right. is an emergency. Yeah, this right. Is if it's not scheduled and you need to have a practice, and it's is an that emergency. an emergency? Maybe That's no. not really an emergency. An emergency is, you know, somebody's house is on fire. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, so yeah. there's emergency there. So that one needs anyway. to be changed to reflect. Well, I think planned things. An event that could not reasonably be anticipated. Anticipated. Something okay, like and then. Um, Except we're busy. An e could say e. teachers and coach. D just needs to be revised to say that. Uh, it'll be sent to all team members, either that it's or laid via a phone tree or whatever the other thing has already been laid out as a process and the procedure. And then E says says plainly that they're not supposed to give them out without prior approval of the district. But I think a coach calling a captain, you just go ahead and say at the beginning of the year, yes, you can. <coughs> yes, you can call team members, so that the district knows. That. <coughs> So on E, would we then change it from teachers to coaches and teachers or school personnel? Yeah, so we have several possibilities here. <laughs> I don't know if you want to make I'd like to make a friendly motions. Um, motion to change the, from teachers into um, school personnel. I mean, it could say teachers or coaches, but then we run into what about the principal or what about, 
yeah, the club, the club leaders. So you know, employees. So we have three things here that need. All has to do is say employees. To so keep it in. would the chair be willing to make the motion on these and to just to simulate them all for us? <laughs> yes. Make. Would you be willing to, make to assimilate all these different things you've heard? Right. And bring you back a revised version of this, no, just, or you want me to offer do it right now? Yeah. Oh. I was hoping Howard was going to offer the motion. Unless Howard, unless Howard <laughs> I, I, likes to. I don't have the answer. To. All right, then. Oh, stop. Um, of course you do. Not right this moment, maybe in a half an hour. Okay, so uh, I move uh, that we amend the policy under number 2B. All e-contacts with students should be through the district's computer, email, and telephone systems, except in situations that could not reasonably have been anticipated. Except in, it's not emergencies, except in, in what? It's fine. What you said. The way ahead, it was fine. Yeah. But they are anticipated. I mean, we know that the coach is going to have to call. We know all of that. Yeah. It's um, not, I mean, it is anticipated that coaches will have to do that. But it should be happening through the school's system unless it's something that came up at the last minute that could not reasonably have been anticipated or it's an emergency. Then they can communicate via something other than their school computer. So you're saying then a coach can no, cannot have it just be as a policy anymore, all right, I'm going to call the team captains and they're going to do the tree and everything else. He has to now initiate it through the computer? I'm saying that the coach is supposed to tell them at the, at, at the current practice when the next practice is or is supposed to send out an email to all team members from his school computer or her school computer <coughs> or whatever the process is unless it's something that they didn't know in advance in which case it can be done from some other device that isn't school stuff and it's only 2b that i'm talking about okay, well i'm not a coach so I, I would like to ask okay. um, does that work ed yeah. she's going to actually i think she's going to make a series of it's you said unforeseen or emer you can just add unforeseen, except in unforeseen or emergency situation. That, that works for me. That's what okay. I'm going to make a car. That way. Is that what you said? Yes. I think I did say that. They stopped. Okay. She, did. she said it was perfect, I thought. <laughs> but it was like that. <laughs> no. I'm pretty sure I said unforeseen or emergency. Where is that? That's a change. That's where she's saying. So do you want to keep going? So this is all one amendment. Has that been seconded? Well, I, I would, she, Ed, she's, still going. she's still going. Oh, yeah. I more. It, but no, I don't want to keep going. I'd rather do it than <laughs> Okay, fine. So there's been a motion so was made to and seconded. We'll be too excited. Uh, all those in favor of that we one amendment, school. please say aye. aye. Well, can we read the amendment exactly what it is? Because I don't think it makes sense, but I'd like to know what I'm voting on exactly. It says, all e-contacts with students should be through the district's computer, email, and telephone systems except in unforeseen or emergency situations. Okay, but the only thing I don't understand about it is it seems to me that it is foreseen that we know that coaches are going to call, so That's it's not an emergency. No, it's no. Circumstances this is that are only this not, one. not foreseen okay. that they're going to. It's like it's like the snowstorm that comes, the field changes, or we it's going to rain or something. Be, we know that, that's that's the unforeseen. It's like a vote, not a okay. Agenda. Yeah. It's at three thirty. You're driving down your way to college. She's having a big. Okay, all those in favor. Okay, I'll say aye. Yeah, aye. We know aye. like that's going to happen. Please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. So move Did along with your next amendment. Um, I, I move that 2D, as in David, be amended to say all contact and messages by coaches with team members shall be sent to all team members <coughs> except for messages concerning medical or academic privacy matters, in which case the messages will be copied to the athletic director and the school principal. Next sentence, the amendment would be if there exists a method for communication, parenthesis, phone tree or whatever it is, that method may be used for communicating. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That if they already know, if they've set up something that doesn't, so that the coach doesn't have to talk with each individual team member, he can call the captain, she can call the parent, 
Except they may have otherwise been. Oh, except. By <laughs> I knew there was a reason why we had attorneys around here. <laughs> except as, so. I, I just didn't want to add it to the sentence because the sentence is already really, really long. The above is true except for or? We could, um, we could, let me, let me start over again, scratch what I said before. All contacted messages by coaches with team members shall be sent to all team members except as, what did you say? Otherwise may have been previously, um, Except where it's a procedure, or an, a, right. a procedure has otherwise been established. Previously established. established. Thank you. Okay, Please got that, Laura. Yep. And then a second sentence that says, "Now, messages concerning like medical or academic privacy matters will be copied to the athletic director and the school principal." Okay. Is there a second on that? I'll second it. Okay. For purpose of discussion. Any uh, dis any questions about that? I kind of have a question about that. Okay, do you have a, an actual question? I'm hoping. Okay. In which case the messages will be copied. Okay. So what exactly, I don't get it. I mean, can you say it one more time? I do get it, but I don't. There's one part in it I don't get. <laughs> okay. All contacted messages by coaches with <coughs> team members shall be sent to all team members except where a procedure has previously been established, otherwise That's established. That's my question. So do we then have to look at the different procedures? I mean, so we're, so we're just having the policy and we can accept all the procedures as is. Got it. They that set a procedure question. for getting in touch with all team members. They don't have to actually make the call as long as the message goes to all team members. This is designed to keep people from just communicating with a couple of people and not with the entire team. Okay. And the second, second sentence is just what's left of that thing as written. Okay. Okay. All I those, just want to make sure we're following it. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So we'll continue with the additional amendments. I'm not sure we need another one. The, okay. the next one would be in E, teachers shall not give out their private cell phone numbers. I think it's employees. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. Employees so too. There is no, do you want all employees? I think you should say school personnel. School personnel. Staff, well, we use employees up staff above in A, so. We use employees up above. Employees. I agree. Are coaches or club advisors employees? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Unless they're volunteers, but otherwise they're employees. Then we'd have to do another policy. Volunteers have the same rules. As Can we hear from Laura? The clerk said she sent me something. Sure, I'm going to recognize okay. the superintendent. Uh, the rationale for that one was going back to the discussion we had last time, the concern was that teachers make contacts to parents after hours using their own phone. And in the era of caller ID, that means you're giving away your telephone number. And so, and that's definitely not an activity that we want to discourage through the policy. And so the um, the proposal was to, instead of saying teachers will not give out their private cell phone number, home phone number, change it to employees now will not provide students with their cell phone number or home phone number without prior approval. Because it's really hard to imagine very many cases where a teacher would be calling a student directly at their home after hours. I agree with you, Maybe it is. Um, but as an elementary school parent, a, would this count, I guess, a teacher giving my second grader the newsletter with her cell phone on it? To me, it's going to me. I know I'm picking yeah. details. Not but, really. Um, but I, I did talk to some people in this, and they love that. I mean, I love <coughs> that the teacher says, please call me up till 8, uh -huh. but it's for my K through five, fifth grader. Well, they do that. In so, JFK too, though. No, I know. So I agree too. with this because it says two. If I could go back to this improper fraternization with students, and then A B C D E F is all about students. So then I thought, oh, this isn't about parents. Good, but with that, what you just said, I felt like, huh, they are giving it to second grade students. But even though it's the intended person is me. As the messenger only. Yeah, it's the she's the messenger. 
Do you understand my problem? I, I do. I mean, if, if I was enforcing a policy such as this, I would say that the intent was not to give the phone yes. number to the student. Right. The intent was to give the phone number to the parent. And that right. if the student happened upon that information, which the student might happen upon yeah. through caller ID just by picking right. up the phone so at the home, parent, it's so incidental. It's not an intentional. Awesome. So that's fine. And then my that last yeah, question that is, five or principal sees this and says, oh, great. Is that district approval? What's that? Um, sees what? Newsletter. Sees newsletter. Unification. Great. Right. Awesome. A phone number. And that's fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Good point. So did we have an amendment there? Or no? Yes, we do. Okay. So the new and I wording would it. be, I'm still worried about employees, but um, does that cover, you said they get a paycheck from the city, but does that cover, there's no one who does? Volunteers would be the only non-paid. Everybody else would be paid. And volunteers probably are not. Okay. So employees will not. What, what was provide, provide students with their private cell phone numbers or home phone numbers without prior approval of the district? Second. Okay. It's a good one. So uh, the motion to amend has been made and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Is that your final amendment? Uh, no. <laughs> I think the superintendent there, might be. There was one more in Laura's email to you to uh, letter A. And this was to address another um, bit of conversation that came up around the first reading, which was the proposal to add the prepositional phrase with exception of family members to the end because we did not want to inadvertently um, prevent teachers who have kids within the school district from having them as members of their social network. Uh, um, or what any one are you on? A. 2A. 2A. So what is it supposed to say? Employees will protect student confidentiality by not listing current students as friends on networking sites except when those students are family members. Oh. Okay. Uh, okay. So will someone second that amendment? Second. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So now I believe that completes the amendments and now we return. So were there any others? Okay. I have a question that's not necessarily in here, but we're on, on C. It says all staff websites will be Google sites within the Northampton K-12 domain. And um, sometimes when we receive um, correspondence on another site, and I'm sure teachers do, you know, the Gmail or whatever, if it's through here, they're supposed to push it over? I mean, to communicate only out of this site? No, this has to do with classroom websites, not with Gmail communication. And the rationale for this is in the event that a site is hacked, um, if it's a Google site, we have a way to track back and determine the source of the hacking and fix it. If it's a teacher creating a website that's outside of the domain, they're kind of doing it at their own risk because if it's hacked, there's very little we can do to help them. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, we're back to the main motion, which is in adopting the entire policy as amended. Second. All those in, no, there's no need for motion. All those in oh. favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so that policy, um, IJMDD, is adopted. <laughs> uh, so now we'll move to graduation requirements, IKF, as revised. IKF was... Re was revised to reflect um, the fact that we previously had a, our previous policy set was changed to say that beginning in 2009, I believe it was, we were going to require 30, uh, 30 credits um, to graduate. However, we were not enforcing that, so we don't want to have a policy that we're not following. So this has been revised back down to 28, and it also contains language that reflects the recommendations that came from the physical education subcommittee, ad hoc committee that studied and recommended the wellness and stuff that was presented at our last meeting. So this is a, is a so I move and the Rules and Policy Committee recommends approval of the revised policy um, IKF on graduation requirements. Second. 
Any discussion or questions on this? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? I wasn't quick enough to ask about the question. I just have a quick question. Um, this doesn't include art in here. I mean, is that going to be something that we're going to look at later as far as uh, this is just like a stepping stone of, of, of adding in for the PE and stuff? Or is like this going to be it for a while? Until such time as we move to adopt the core curriculum as recommended by the state, I don't think we have a requirement for art for graduation. Okay. Um, you'll recall this topic came up when we discussed Mass Core, which is actually a component of the current district improvement plan that is about <coughs> to expire. The committee, I think, was clear in its um, intention that we not adopt Mass Core at this time. Um, the, that's why we did not address the requirement for art or the requirement for foreign language as part of the ad hoc subcommittee group. Okay, so now we are we have completed all of the uh, various policy updates that have to happen, and now we have a uh, referral of a request uh, for full time release for NACE president to the negotiating subcommittee. Um, so again, this is a request that was made in writing from the NACE president, and we would like a vote to refer that to the negotiating subcommittee. I'd like to make a motion to refer the. That to the, um, the the request for a full time release for NACE president to the negotiating subcommittee. Is there a second? Ms. Second. Mary seconds. Uh, <coughs> all those, any questions about this? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> any abstentions? Okay. We'll now turn to the business administrator for her report. Okay. We've got a couple of things to run through here tonight as we get towards the end of the year. Um, first of all, I summarized briefly for you the status of this year's budget. I did an in-depth analysis and projections out through the end of the year. Um, and it looks like at this point, good or bad news, we are just about at the break-even point. The bad news is we have a deficit in the vicinity of $300,000 in special ed and a deficit of close to $100,000 in utilities, which are outlined in a little more detail. The good news is, is that we had identified the um, personnel accounts that had some additional monies budgeted in them. So essentially by the end of the year we'll be using those personnel savings, if we want to call them that, to cover those two deficits. Um, if that's the overview. i just keep moving through this unless there's questions. I have a question about that. Do we, those, those places where we ran over the budget, did we, this year, did we increase how much we budgeted for the utilities and for the special ed? Or yeah, if you re on utilities, if you remember back when we went through the budget process, it was a substantial <coughs> increase. And at the time, we said that that really seemed to reflect a two-year increase because this year was actually level funded to last year, the way the budget was done. So in effect, if we had increased the budget this year, 100000 we would have been dealing with a much smaller increase next year. Special Ed um, did not have a very large increase next year, but she's, um, the director has continued to review those numbers. And there's actually a number of kids that are aging out or moving out of town and were optimistic at this point in time that for next year she's a little bit under budget but that can change day by day in special ed but yeah, yeah they work out somebody who wants to move here um there was mention here with the transfer that was actually done earlier tonight for utilities that's something that we've been talking about all year to try to get the utilities into the local budget so that we can do better historical comparisons going forward um, i made mention here too there is a um, federal regulation that the department of ed has really been um, notifying schools of more strongly since last year is that if we have uncollected student debt in the school lunch program we will need to make a budget transfer to the food service revolving account at the end of the year from our budget i allowed for that in the projection that i did for this report um, we are continuing to try to contact those families and have tried a number of different things with limited success and we do expect to have a deficit as outlined here by the end of the year Ms. minnick this is a very awkward and uncomfortable thing the school committee has been very clear that we don't want children to go without a meal and we don't want to put um, students or parents in an awkward position but we can't afford to just let people I, first of all it's not fair to the people who do make the effort to pay that some other people are not making an effort to pay if you know and secondly it's not uh, it's, I realize it's not a huge amount at this point in time, but there's no guarantee for future years that it will be in the same, I just, I mean, we, 
that's not something we should just be eating every year. Do we have thoughts on how we can go about doing a better job of collecting this? So, so if I, please. Um, if uh, I'll just outline some of the measures we've taken, um, and I think that we have had a lot of success in bringing the total amount of debt down. But I think we're at a, a level now where we're dealing with a small um, number of um, participants who have been resistant to everything we've thought of so far. So um, we've done letters and phone calls, um, both from the business office and from the food service office and from the principals. Um, we've had PTOs um, engage in fundraising efforts for this so that we could offer matching incentive programs for families to try to say, well, if, if you can clear half of your debt, um, the PTO will help clear the other half of the debt. We've done um, monthly payment plans with very low um, monthly payments. I just, I just think I'm kind of out of um, tools in my toolbox for trying to get to the the small number of families with the uncollected debt. And I should say that um, of the $3,000 and $5,000, as I had said um, in the last um, time I addressed this topic, it is probably um, less than 15 families that account for half of that. Um, so it's... It, and this is just current year. No, some of this carried over from last year because in, in the last year's budget, we didn't have the requirement to clear out the debt. From this point going forward, every year would start at zero because the school committee would, will be responsible for paying any unpaid debts. Um, Mr. Moore? Are, 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 these, um, are these debts owed by people who are, who, are, who are not currently free or reduced lunch families? For the, the most part. Um, that has also, I should mention that, a, a big part of our effort in um, clearing debt was to try to qualify families who could qualify for free and reduced lunch. Um, still and have they it. still have a debt, but in that, in that case, um, the debt doesn't grow any bigger. Um, for the, the group that I mentioned, sort of of active families, they're people who don't qualify, whose debt is continuing to grow. Did you have a question, Mr. Ball? Um, not about that. I have a question about, um, let me see where it is, the carryover funds number two. Yeah, we haven't got there yet. Okay. Then never mind. I'll wait till you get there. Are we all set in terms of the explanation regarding the school lunch deficit? We also that uh, answer your question? No. I'm not sure that, I mean, <coughs> what he said was he, he's out of tricks. I don't know that we know what the answer is. Mm -hmm. We need to figure out something to do, but I don't know. Do we know if this problem um, uh, became a larger problem when we went to the lunchbox program where we could actually start charging? So years ago, you used to buy the ticket and you, you paid for the ticket and you had your ticket and you went to the, and I know we got away from that because it identified students who were on free and reduced lunch, but it didn't seem the financial burden that the school committee now has was as great when we used a system such as that. I'm wondering if there's some way to look at the old system that would allow us not to somehow identify the student, but make sure that we get the, the financial part of it out of the way first before we allow people to uh, basically get free services from the school for, for eating in the cafeteria with, in some cases, no um, responsibility to pay it back. The problem with that is it's kids. Is the problem is, it, is it's is with that one is it's kids. I mean, I understand what you're saying, but if we if they didn't have a ticket to pay because they had to pay in advance, then you're having kids that are no that are just not eating lunch because they don't have the ticket. It's not like so you're punishing the kids for for the parents, and and that should be almost like totally separate there. Okay. Uh I was just I was just wanting to know what is the exact policy so if I, I feel like it was if you were at a deficit you don't get the full lunch but you get a sandwich or do you get the full lunch whether you have money or not full lunch that was a, that was a school committee policy vote in the past yes okay. when was the vote when was the vote do you last year last year, last year. Last year. I remember that I yeah. wasn't paying 
And if I remember, you weren't on the committee. Did we take out the part that gave authority to sue on small claims? If we my did. recollection is correct, we did. So my my suggestion might be, and I don't know what everyone thinks about this, to have a letter from the legal office that represents the district at some point, like once all of those things that you just said, which I think is a pretty exhaustive list of remedies, once <coughs> all of those things are exhausted, to maybe have a, just a, a form letter go out. Just a suggestion. And I would agree with that, because that's a way then to be directly dealing with the parents, as opposed to all the other yeah. ways that right. you suggested involve you know, somehow or other dragging this kid who presumably hasn't been part of the decision not to pay for lunches um, <coughs> into it somehow sort of to try to leverage the parents. And I think right. and whereas the if, if it's the parents who are being um, brought to court, that's but then they'll not only the case have to eat. threaten sue. I'm not saying you should yeah. even threaten sue. I'm Just saying it's coming from the legal letter. office. A certified letter, letter coming from, from the legal, legal office saying, saying it's come to our attention that you owe this please bring your account current. So that we don't have to take any other action. Right. And what if their action, though, is to no longer feed their kid at school? I mean, that's the only thing that they can think of is, okay, fine, I can't make it any worse. So, I mean, now we have kids that aren't eating they at aren't school. Doing that already. But I'm talking about after all of the <laughs> other suggested Sorry. remedies are, are used, which is find out do they qualify, like, you know. Oh, I understand that, but I'm just really worried about the, the child being I don't the think one that suffering. I don't, I don't think I've seen. It changes anything. I think with all of those other things, I've seen I don't think that will happen. Yeah, if they haven't stopped feeding their child when the principal sent them a letter, I don't think that they're going to stop. Actually, though, some have. Some have. And the thing is, and it's the schools that under that have seen it and noticed it and then end up feeding them. I mean, because I know that for a fact that some have. That's how some of the parents de dealt with it over at Ryan Road. And Ryan Road, and it was when Margie was still there, Miss um, Riddle was still there, and she had to take more of, an, uh, of a proactive approach because, I mean, that's how some parents do want to handle it. They don't want so to be in debt like that. She changed our policy a year ago. And right. It's not there. She wasn't there last year. No. So, I mean, it, that was right, something that wouldn't happen. Past. So, I think that no. we're working to address it now. Ms. Right. Fallon. So I, I, the reason I'm asking this is I don't, I don't understand. Is this a few families that have huge debts, or is this a lot of families with a small debt? Um, a few. He said a few with a lot. Few. Okay. Big okay. Because I was going to say I, I have this friend with four kids, and she puts the same amount of money in all the kids' accounts, and one of them goes through the money at a ridiculous rate, and it turns out, without her knowledge, he may be ordering lunch every day despite the fact that she sends a healthy lunch. And don't you have four children? <coughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, it is somewhat shocking to get that letter when you are sending lunch with your child, so I didn't know if that was potentially happening to other families where they're sending lunches and their kids are racking up a bill. We, as part of our um, process of working with families, we have had families who were surprised by the debt um, because they've been sending their kids with lunches and not realizing that their child was charging. And so <coughs> we have had a number of families who've asked that we deactivate their child's charge account with the understanding that they will be sending them with a lunch every day. So that, that could okay. be part of it. Okay. Well, another part is the milk. That became an issue because uh, a lot of kids, when they bring their lunch, then they don't have a milk. And so a lot of kids were grabbing a milk thinking, well, at least I have a milk, and the milk was costing a lot and bringing up the, the bills, too. I think we should provide milk. Okay. Um, so ref remind me, then, the card that a student uses to get lunch, is that a declining balance card that is refilled, or is that a charge card that they just go in and then you get a bill at the end of the month? It's a declining balance, but there's a but you can overrun it. Can so run the, it the parent, the ideal is that the parent goes in either with a, with a check to us or online, because we have the online payment now that a lot are using. You go in and put money on account as the child goes through. And I don't know if they're all cards. Some might be PIN numbers, but I'm not familiar exactly with every school here. But as the child goes through and uses the method, it's a declining balance. But it, they do not get cut off at zero per school committee policy. So they might put $20 on, and they continue to charge, and they're up to 40 or $50. So now they've got a negative $30. So when a card gets to zero, you contact the parent. Some yeah, it, usually they do it before it gets like to zero. Yeah. You no, get down to the low negative. balance, you get an email saying mm -hmm. it's $10. Well, yeah. Yeah, they, they, you get an email. Yeah. If there's some kind yeah. of contact that you know that your child's balance is getting close to. It comes already. So in the situation, the hypothetical situation that Ms. Fallon described, 
you would just like not put very much on the card so that they run into the you, you get an email saying right. so you've got ten dollars left notification i've been sending you a lunch what the heck are but you doing only if you're on the school bucks program i think do you get an email otherwise you get a letter of hard copy in the mail and that the, de the delay the lag it's pretty amazing yeah. how quickly you can, like you owe negative twenty six dollars <laughs> you know like your balance is and it's negative whatever it. <laughs> so i think if you're not linked to school bucks it may it may actually get pretty they, low yes. before you get the letter in the do mail. they still send the letters home yeah. with kids <laughs> no i don't think so i don't remember what was that? Yeah. do they still right. send the letters home with the kids no. i was i thought we voted i know for a them family not with to. two children who does not get a letter <laughs> 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 what the dilemmas of parenting? We might be able days. to close the deficit I'm right so here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> how how many families was it, <laughs> Sir Simmerton? I think we're off now. Luckily, my only gets me Okay, so we were in the middle of the business administrator's report. <laughs> yeah. On to number two. Yes. Okay. Really. I thought it was important to bring this to the committee's attention because this is something that is new to Northampton. Um, apparently, in the past, we at the end of the year, we always have open purchase orders that have not been delivered yet or with the timing of the warrants haven't been paid off yet. That is absolutely normal in every, every municipality. Those are what I call carryover, for, holdovers, whatever term you want to use in accounting. Um, in the past, the way that it was handled in Northampton was if, for example, we had a purchase order held over for $1,000, the bill came in for 800, that remaining $200 was allowed to remain in the school department budget and essentially by the end of the following year, it could be used for something else. That is not normal state accounting. It was something that was picked up by the auditors right before I got here. And, and I think one of my first emails from the chief financial officer was to say that this process would be changing. It was not unusual to me because that's what I've always had to do. Basically, the funds that are held over for those purchase orders at the end of the year are sort of maintained separately. If there's $200 left on that purchase order, it remains there. And at the end of the year, those holdover funds or those carryover funds close out to the city's general funds. So yes, we've got open purchase orders. We have the right to hold on to that money to pay those bills. But if the bills come in lower than what we anticipated, the balance reverts back to the city. That's normal municipal accounting. That's what we will be doing this year for the first time. I reviewed those holdover purchase orders a, a couple weeks ago and looked at those. And it looks right now that there will probably be about $60,000 that was held over that wasn't needed mostly because prices came in lower, shipping, there was no shipping or shipping lower than expected. In some cases, items out of stock and we couldn't get them. So there's approximately $60,000 that will be going back to the city's general fund when we close out this fiscal year. Typical accounting, I've dealt with this for 30 some years. Um, but it's new to Northampton and I didn't want somebody to hear that the school department returned money that we should have spent. Legally, we don't have the right to spend those funds. We've got what we intended to buy with it. We just got a better price. Um, you have a question, Mr. Ball. I do. When we, when we get a better price, um, we did. We made cuts this year. We've we've made cuts and everything else. How come we can't take the sixty thousand and say, okay, this is anticipated not to or whatever, and be able to municipal, spend it elsewhere? Municipal finance law. We place. We have to place our orders for this year by June thirtieth. Right. If they're not paid for, they carry into next year. Once we pay those bills, if there's a balance left, it belongs back to the the general fund of the city. Because we've got what we ordered. It actually flows to free cash. I mean, it, when the books close, it flows to free cash. Like every other city department has the same situation. Right, but then when we, but but we, so we miscalculated sixty thousand dollars somewhere. Yeah. Is what you're saying, which is like what I'm saying a, is that a, in a, in a, a, a hundred hired? million dollar budget, you do not, you can't budget to the penny, and and it, no, you know, you it's a budget. It's a it's an estimate of what you think you're going to spend, and then the actuals sometimes don't don't match up often they some don't. some bills will yeah. come in higher than the purchase orders some come in lower well it's just frustrating because this is like this could be an ELL this happens something else I mean it could be uh, it something happens, that we had to cut it happens every single day on every bill we would pay in my 34 years I would say 10 percent of the bills I pay on accounts payable are paid in the amount of the purchase order it is normal for the bills to come in different teachers get their prices I've, I've actually have been amazed sometimes when there's an actual written quote from the company and it says in black and white it's going to be nine thousand eight hundred fifty dollars and the bill comes in for eight thousand i'm like we did everything right we got a written quote we did the purchase order and i guess they decided they liked us so they gave us an extra discount before they shipped it so we have no rule that we can then 
to have like an emergency meeting and say, look, this is yeah. money that we anticipate because to have. Because it's in the, the following, in. It's in it's the in following the fiscal year, so we have no right to those funds. Yeah. And this is, it just doesn't seem to make sense. I'm, I'm just, it doesn't make any sense to me because we so made long. cuts. So we, I mean, so we miscalculated by 60,000. No, we didn't miscalculate. I, there's no miscalculation, and that's not a fair term to use for teachers and administrators in the buildings who got their prices, who did their purchase orders, and we got free shipping, or we got a discount, or they looked at the volume of business and, and gave us an extra discount for some reason, or sometimes the item they thought was in stock is, is no longer available. It's not a miscalculation. It's just well, I understand that. Cheaper. But in a kind of way, it is, but not on their fault. I mean, the kind of way that we could have had spent more money so I mean maybe we're not pushing it far enough to the end you know at the end of each year I don't understand and hopefully beyond this year I will when you when all the money gets up you know moved from all the different accounts and I mean in the past it's very very hard to figure out why and where it just seems to me if we have 60,000 and we can anticipate it why can't we then put it into something that we can't computers for this it. year we can't anticipate years it. over well maybe next year you question. can Fiscal year ends July 1st, right? Right. We June 30th. Yeah. I understand the, the idea completely, but is $60,000 an average number? Because to me, that sounds really high. I, yeah. I would say, again, Northampton has no history. Okay. And right. I t when I walked in and tried right. to get the state report last year and found out how this worked, right. I was shocked. <laughs> um, in my last district for 14 years, the balance at the end of the year, I would say, was anywhere between 30, uh, uh, from 10 to 30 or $40,000 a year. This is it just, it just six, so sixty thousand okay. dollars doesn't feel out of whack to me. Okay, based on my history, and I just have one other comment that I'd like to make uh, t uh, out of this. But whoever <coughs> switched the financial reports back upright, I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so why can't we spend the six? I'm just back to this. Why can't we spend it on like right now? We have till June thirtieth. Buy we, computers for technology. We know we have that. Mm -hmm. this, is last, this is last year's money. So at the close of the year last year, like and the, last year, this is last year's purchase orders that were carried over to be paid this year. As they are all being paid off this year, the bills are coming in less. So, okay, so it's 2014 left, last year. Last year's money oh. we're spending this year has to go back. The same thing will happen at the end of this year. We will have a quarter million, half a million dollars of open purchase orders. Those monies will carry forward. We will pay off those bills over the next 12 months. And a year from now, we'll be having the same conversation about how much of the FY15 money is going back to the city in a year. It so, is normal municipal process. So if there's some way, though, that we can calculate an estimate, then can we at, other end, at the other end at the beginning create more in the budget? If we say okay, every every year we lose about fifty to sixty thousand, so can't, why not create can't more in the budget? Purchase orders more than you have for money. So these purchase orders brought the budget down to zero. We can't bring the budget down to minus fifty thousand and hope that we don't need. And we can't fill out purchase orders for less than what the thing we think the thing costs. Well, I understand that. I'm just saying once we have the money and we see where it's not being spent, we know we have a technology um, fund that we're doing all the time. I was thinking this year being this past year. You're talking about. 1314, 1415. This is 14, I have three 15. years going in my head. So we are in fiscal 15. Right. This is fiscal's 14's money. Okay. That was carried into 15 to pay off the bill. Okay. So if we don't need it by municipal law, it goes back to the city. It's the city's money. We had it to pay off bills. We paid off our bills. We don't need it. It goes back to the city to reappropriate through. What so there's absolutely no way that when we already have like a technology fund where we're trying to get 300000 that we can take some of that money that we we'll just have to give back and say, oh, look, and now it can go towards doing that. None. No. Some of it does. Not unless you want well, to break the law. Yeah. Well, I don't want to break well, the law. I want to understand actually, why. Because it's, it's the It law. goes back to the city's right. free cash. Right. And, right. and if the city's free cash is depleted, then it's a good thing that we have more free cash because mm -hmm. things happen during the course of the year. <clears throat> but if the city's free cash was this gargantuan thing, then I'm sure the mayor would find ways to spend it. We also spend, yeah. uh, we do spend uh, free cash on capital improvements, for example. So, yeah. so school, is getting, school. school is getting some of that money back in the form of capital improvements. So. Right. Capital improvements. That's what I want to see is how it all fits <laughs> together. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Finally, because I, I had a similar. Ms. Minnick is recognized. I, I, I had a similar question. 
for the superintendent that I asked him before the meeting. This is not the same thing as realizing as we're getting close to the end of the year that we haven't spent all of the money in a certain line item. At that point in time, I think we would scramble around and see if there was not something we could do to find a place to order something by June the 30th and spend our money so that we don't have to just turn it back over to the city as much as we love them. We would find a way to spend it on things that we needed in the district, but this is money that we didn't, we can't anticipate because it's been encumbered for something that's supposed to come in the next fiscal year, and we don't know it until after it happens. So we're required by law to return that. So very clearly presented. Thank you. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Would you got like to continue okay. the report? Two more quick things here. So over the past couple months, we've been coming to you, particularly in the area of athletics, and asking you to approve gifts that will come via fundraisers. You're actually pre-approving the gifts so they can go ahead and hold the fundraiser, and everybody knows it will be accepted. So I will periodically come back to you and let you know the outcome of those. So the one that has most recently been closed out with us was the Northampton Mile. And they actually made a final donation that totaled five thousand four hundred and ninety-five dollars to the cross country team. That's awesome. And then the last one is just a short note to let you that we have let you know that we have made the decision to go ahead and proceed with purchase of the ASOP substitute um, tracking system to try and make some improvements in how we handle the scheduling and tracking of our substitute teachers. And we actually got the contract signed today and are setting up a schedule for implementation over the summer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, personnel report? Yes, very short as we get into May. We had a hire of a of and schedule as a point four Title I reading teacher at Bridge Street School, effective May 5th. And we had a um, it's called promotion, but I say a second appointment or secondary appointment of Whitney Russell to be the conditioning coach at Northampton High School. Okay. Russell. Now we'll move to the superintendent's report. Thank you. Without question, the highlight of this past month for me was graduation exercises that were held this past Sunday. 220 students of the Northampton High School class of 2015 left their mark academically, athletically, and artistically as evidenced in the beautiful graduation ceremony that I have to tell you was easily the most musical and student-centered graduation exercises I've ever attended. In fact, I was um, really just reflecting on that with another superintendent prior to the meeting tonight. Um, and I, I have seen many graduations in many districts, and I have to tell you that it, it really um, touched me as being right at the top. Mm -hmm. um, I'd also like to congratulate the Northampton High School softball team for winning out the last five games of the season to make the tournament, as well as the girls lacrosse team for finishing the regular season 14 and four to enter the postseason tournament as the fourth seed. I'd also like to congratulate the girls and boys tennis teams for their successful seasons and qualifications for postseason play. And finally, I'd like to commend the boys and girls track teams for their successful seasons, especially the relay teams which qualified for nationals. And I know that it's been said that it's not really done yet, but I, I don't think I can resist commenting on the mural. <laughs> as, uh, as you drove in tonight, I'm sure you noticed the new mural project, which has been completed and installed. Well, not completed. All, I would say 99% completed and is now up on the building. Um, I believe the mural serves to embellish um, the beauty of the wonderful school that we sit in here. And I find it very appropriate that JFK is now wearing its values on its sleeve, so to speak. Um, values such as tolerance, kindness, and strength. Values that I think the man for whom the school was named would find to be very worthy values. Um, if people want to know what this school and this community are all about, I think now all we have to do is say, go look at the mural painted by a cast of dozens, much of it done during school vacation <coughs> week, and they'll know what the school is all about. Mm -hmm. Last night, I also had the pleasure of experiencing my first JFK Spring concert at the Academy of Music. And once again, I was truly amazed by the musical talents and stage presence of so many of our students who were really just kids, but um, commanded the stage like very accomplished musicians. Um, 
I'd also like to inform the committee that we've had some changes in projected enrollment since the passage of the budget, um, which create the need for additional staff at Jackson. But these look like they'll be offset by lower than anticipated enrollment at Leeds. At this point, we believe we'll be able to maintain an average elementary class size of 18 or 19 in the four elementary schools with a minimum number of transfers and no reductions or increases to the budget. Our district improvement planning committee, which represents a very diverse mix of teachers, administrators, parents, and community members, has met three times so far. Subcommittees have been formed to work on each of the six root causes identified in the root cause analysis. The groups have created theories of action and begun working on strategies to address the root causes. And I think that based on comments I've received, many have found the work to be challenging but stimulating. Um, and I feel confident that they're creating a very high quality district improvement plan for your consideration. I'd also like to thank David Pomerantz, Joe Cook, and all the city departments for their assistance with the small fire at JFK. Thanks to everyone's professional response, the impact on the physical plant has been limited to the bathroom, and the impact on the school budget looks like it will be in, in, limited to the $10,000 deductible. Finally, I'd like to inform the committee that I've been elected to the executive committee of the Connecticut Valley Superintendent's Roundtable. I hope my a uh, new role will help me to more effectively advocate for the needs of our students and for all public students in the region. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Great. Okay. Um, I need to note a couple of business <coughs> meeting dates. Budget and Property Subcommittee will meet on June 17th at 4 p.m. in the superintendent's office. And then our next school committee meeting will be uh, July 9th, 2015 at 7.15 p.m. Um, I will note that that is a meeting that I will likely not be able to attend because it's, as this traditionally happens, the city council Once meeting budget and property held that same night. Um, next, we have on the agenda um, a, a uh, item to move to executive session, and I would ask the vice chair to make that motion. Make a motion to adjourn to executive session in JFK Principals Conference Room under Mass General Law open meeting for the approval of Executive Session Minutes, March 12, 2015, Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining, NACE, and Chapter 30A, Section 21A2, to discuss contract negotiations with non-union personnel, administrators, and food service director. Second. Second. Okay. Could I um, ask the clerk to please call the roll? And on this uh, on this vote, it's a yes or no vote. Yes to move into the executive session. Yeah, I know. What's that? I will be doing that after the vote. Yeah. Yes. 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 Same, yes. Yes. Okay, so I do need to inform the public that we will now, the school committee will now be adjourning into executive session, in the JFK Principals Conference Room, because to uh, discuss these matters in open session uh, would be detrimental to the uh, committee's uh, position. Um, I also need to announce that we will be returning to open session. Um, uh, following the executive session for potential votes and then a formal adjournment of the, uh, of the meeting. So with that, we can now move over to the uh, principal's conference room. Welcome back to the June 11, 2015 meeting of the Northampton School Committee. Uh, the school committee has uh, returned to open session from an executive session that we were holding. Um, and we do have a couple of items that we will need to vote on in back in open session before we uh, complete our meeting this evening. Um, we have uh, two memorandums of agreement uh, that are um, memorandums uh, related to the uh, NACE contract. And uh, I think what I'll do is I'll ask Mr. Meyer to uh, make motions to approve these individually. Okay, the uh, first is a memorandum of agreement, athletic director, and 
uh, whereas the Northampton School Committee and the Northampton Association of School Employees have engaged in collective bargaining negotiations over the removal of the athletic director position from Unit A and inclusion of the position in Unit B, and whereas the committee and the association Association have reached agreement, and I'll just summarize the now. Therefore, the athletic director's position will be moved from the Unit A contract to the Unit B contract. Um, language will be changed to reflect that movement, um, and the two parties have um, reached tentative agreement. And I move that we uh, ratify and approve this memorandum of agreement. Second. Okay. So there's been a motion made and seconded to ratify <coughs> this uh, memorandum of agreement concerning the athletic director. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Okay, Mr. Ma. Uh, the second is a memorandum of agreement, certain stipend positions. Again, the school committee and the association have entered into collective bargaining negotiations over the inclusion of certain stipends in the Unit A contract. And again, I will summarize the uh, now therefore um, certain stipends that have not been in the contract previously will now be included and paid for service to the district that has been rendered and these pay rates will continue into the next fiscal year okay. and i would move that we ratify and approve this memorandum of agreement second okay so there's a motion made and seconded to ratify this memorandum of agreement all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. opposed any abstentions Okay, uh, so that completes the business we need to do, and I would now entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. And second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The meeting of the school committee is adjourned.